My name is Dr. Nellie Tan, and we're going to go over some abnormal KUB findings. These are radiographs, and these are the list of items that the AMSER National Guidelines suggest for medical students to review. This is an example of a normal abdominal radiograph. There is normal, we look at air, bone, soft tissue, and this is an example of normal. Here's another example of a normal radiograph. Uh, this is the older patient. We can see costochondral cartilage, calcifications here, a little bit of degenerative changes. But overall, we're looking for a bowel gas pattern. Bones look degenerative in nature. Maybe there's a little bit of minor compression deformity here from osteopenia. Um, but otherwise, there's no obstruction, no free air, no egregious findings. In, here's another example of a normal um, chest radiograph. And you can see the upper abdomen here. Um, there's no free air under the diaphragm. So on chest radiograph, we can often see abdominal findings as well, which we see here. So here we have a patient who has an upright chest radiograph. There is a enteric tube. Um, it terminates here, so it's probably malpositioned. Uh, in addition to that, the more important finding is the lucency under the diaphragm under both diaphragms, and this is consistent with free air. In contrast to some of the normal radiographs we've seen, this one is abnormal. The, there's small bowel dilatation throughout the abdomen, highly concerning for small bowel obstruction. So in these cases, the next study of choice is a CT abdomen and pelvis. This is a patient who's supine, but when the patient stands up, we can see that there's air fluid level. And this is what we typically see with small bowel obstruction because there's an obstruction distally. So the normal air and fluid is not able to pass. And so you get buildup of that and proximal upstream distension. This is a CT abdomen and pelvis corresponding to the same patient. And we see that the bowel is abnormally dilated. And there's also free fluid in the pelvis and around the abdomen. This is consistent with the small obstruction. There's no free air, there's no fluid collection. We can identify the point of obstruction, which in this case is probably distal because there's decompressed distal small bowel with dilated upstream bowel. Here is another example of an abnormal radiograph. In this case, we see both small bowel and large bowel distension. Remember, large bowel is like a picture frame along the boundaries, whereas small bowel is more central. So here we see dilatation of both, which suggests that the obstruction is probably closer to the descending colon sigmoid region, which is concerning for a large bowel obstruction. So the CT abdomen pelvis for the same patient confirms abnormal dilatation of the ascending, descending, as well as part of the small bowel. And when we look at the distal colon, we see that the obstruction extends to this level of obstruction right here. Um, in patients, the most common cause of a large bowel obstruction is colon cancer. Other causes include sigmoid death. Uh, sigmoid diverticulitis, inf so infection, inflammatory, uh, but neoplasm is the most common cause. So the patient went on to get a colonoscopy, and this area of obstruction was actually focal sigmoid diverticulitis. Here's another example of an abnormal radiograph. Here what we see is two radiograph images that demonstrate markedly abnormally distended colon. Uh, remember, colon is much larger in caliber compared to small bowel, and we see this loop-like appearance of the colon. So this patient uh, went on to get a CT abdomen and pelvis, and what we see this is a markedly dilated sigmoid colon, which has twisted on itself. And as you may appreciate, there's the swirl here where the sigmoid mesocolon twisted on itself. So this is an example of a sigmoid volvulus. Here we have another example of a normal radiograph. And in contrast to the normal radiograph, this patient has diffuse balanced dilatation of the small bowel. This is an example of ileus, which can be seen after surgery or it can be seen in patients who are on opioids.
We're moving on to now abnormal stones in the renal collecting system. Here we have a radiograph and this is corresponding to an area of the right renal shadow. But within the right renal shadow, we see this high density reniform radiopaque region, which corresponds to area of stones. The stone pattern distribution is surrounding most of the calyces. And when we do a CT abdomen and pelvis, we confirm the diagnosis of heavy stone burden involving majority of the calyces and renal pelvis. This is an example of a staghorn renal stone. Patients with stones can have complications, specifically hydronephrosis from obstruction, for example, in the ureteral region. Here's an example of an ultrasound that demonstrates severe hydronephrosis. In comparison, this is a normal renal ultrasound where we see the renal sinus fat. In contrast, in the central renal sinus fat area, we see this dilated collecting system consistent with severe hydronephrosis. The patient had a CT abdomen and pelvis, and we see a stone in the right ureteral vesicle junction right over here at the junction of the bladder and the ureter, causing the upstream severe hydroureteral nephrosis. Now let's talk about abnormal calcifications that we can see on radiographs. On this first radiograph, we see abnormal calcifications centrally. And this is due to pancreatic calcifications from chronic pancreatitis. Here are some more abnormal calcifications here. We see along the costochondral cartilage. This is not really quite abnormal since we see this in normal older patients uh, when the costochondral cartilage calcify. Uh, here we see um, calcifications in the pelvis. And this pattern is specific for phleboliths, which are calcifications within veins and it happens in normal individuals. Here are some more examples of abnormal calcifications. Here's a radiograph and we see these coarse dystrophic calcifications in the pelvis and these are seen with calcified fibroids. Here we see abnormal calcifications that are linear and these calcifications are vascular. So these are severe vascular calcifications. And in this radiograph, we see calcifications here, and that corresponds to calcifications, cal calcified gallstones. So this is a summary of some of the important findings that we can see on abdominal radiograph.